So I hear that you are a lawyer. Corporate and uh, corporate and commercial transactional lawyer. That's awesome. I kind of wanted to hear a little bit about your childhood. So um, there was a severe beating oh. by my father when I was very young. Growing out in poverty, the only thing that you think as a child is how are you going to make it tomorrow? Absolutely. I'm wondering yeah. in that really despondent and desperate situation, what kept you going? You know, everything started to change when I... Hello. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining us here. Thank Hi. you for having me. My name is Benson. You can call me Ben. Ben? Hi. Yeah. Where are you joining from? I'm joining from Arusha, Tanzania. This is in East Africa. Nice. Yeah. So I hear that you are a lawyer. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what you do there. As a lawyer, I'm a corporate lawyer, a corporate and uh, corporate and commercial transactional lawyer. That's awesome. I kind of wanted to hear a little bit about your childhood. The street and uh, the neighborhood was not that safe for the upbringing of a child. Yeah. Mm. So um, there was a severe beating oh. by my father when I was very young. And then there was abusive words that coming around from the neighborhood. So nowhere was safe in the neighborhood. That was a little bit difficult growing up as a child. Growing out in poverty, the only thing that you think as a child is how are you going to make it tomorrow? How are you going to make a living? Mm -hmm. I remember we used to work when we were very young. Early. We were carrying waters, yes. Carrying waters and, and distributing water to other houses so that you can get paid a little. I'm so sorry to hear that. So like, you know, every children deserves love and care from the parents and family and you really haven't had that at least for um, tanzania where i grew up it was not common for a parent to tell the, the child that they love them oh. it was not common yeah. so we grew up in a life where nobody can tell you that i love you that that's so hard because i'm a child psychiatrist and i tell parents and other adults that the children more than anything more than you know food and environment what they need is love and right they know that they are loved i'm wondering yeah. in that really despondent and desperate situation what kept you going and what really helped you or sustained you spiritually you know everything started to change when i first came to know compassion yeah that was 1999. Uh, how old were you it's when i met you I think I was around seven, I was around eight, uh -huh. yes, seven or eight. Mm. The relation that I had with my sponsors is the reason that kept me going. Mm. I used to receive letters from them, uh -huh. and in every letter that I get from them, uh -huh. they'd always tell me, it will always end with, we love you, we pray for you, and we hope to see you one day. Wow. So we were in a good communication, and then she would always tell me the same, same thing, you know. Wow. She would always remind me of who I want to be, because she once asked me, who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. And then uh, she kept on reminding me, she kept on telling me that I'm very important, uh, you know, I matter a lot, and those things started to build something in my heart and slowly brought up a change and suddenly I became a different person. That's wonderful that do you think that those letters telling you that you're loved and you're a special person and you're worthy that really began making you believe that you are Absolutely. loved? I can proudly say that because I, I see my friends whom I grew up together with at the same, at the same neighborhood. I, I see where they are right now mm -hmm. and I can see my different from them. Mm. Most of them have ended in drugs, others ended in, in excessive oh. alcoholic drinking, others gotten pregnant. 
the oh. school dropout. It's a lot of things, you know, it's a yeah. chaotic environment, but right. out of all those things, and then I, I managed to um, get out of that. Yeah, that's, that's just amazing. I'm curious because I'm kind of learning about compassion and its programs. What types of programs were you in and what did you learn and what did they teach? And kind of curious how you spent time in those programs. Uh, in our center, we were somehow close to 250, something there. Children? Total number, yes. Yeah. So in those programs, we used to go there every Saturday. When we get there, we'll have a morning devotion. And then after morning devotion, we'll go through curriculums. So there's spiritual, there's physical, and then there was economical. In spiritual is that how you grow in Christ, how you become a, a matured Christian, how you become a better person, how you manage to to go through and um, come out the winner through the temptations and everything of a childhood, of a youth, ages and stuff like that. So in the physical, they teach how to take care of your body, how to stay active, how to maintain your health and stuff like that. And then in economy, they used to teach us about uh, the petty economic activities that we can do as, as young children to raise some money. I remember I was told to make uh, a carpentry, you see, make a table or make a chair wow. at my age of 13. Wow, you were making I, like tables and chairs when you were 13. Was a so we do that. <laughs> Those things we were told to help us to uh, manage to have a better life, at least yeah. economically, to be able yeah. to sustain ourselves. And we also talked about other things about farming. There are other children who had who in their houses, they have places that they can do farming. So they, they were told how to do farming and they were very successful children, just a vegetable farming and they would sell it in different places, they would sell it in the bulk and they would make money. And now they also have uh, social emotions and uh -huh. a cognitive. Yeah. And, and do you think that through that, those programs you began seeing yourself differently? You know, uh, from what we learn every Saturday and what we hear from the sponsors, those things, they stick in the brain yeah. and it transforms personality. Mm -hmm. It transforms mindset. Yeah. The school curriculum aims at making you just an ordinary person like anybody else. Right. But compassion curriculum aimed at making us extraordinary. So many things that were taught in compassion, we were not taught at school. Right, right. Particularly those children from the difficult background, right? What they need is more than just math and English and reading. It's, uh -huh. as you said, the social, emotional support and spiritual support. Most children suffer depression yeah. that comes out of the treatment that they get from parents and then the, the experience that they have with their parents, the neighborhood, they really suffer from and um, depression. There's no no school that normally used to teach them. Right. Even though in Korea the overall living environment is much better, you know, most uh -huh. kids are you know well taken care of, but they have different type of stress coming from really this very highly competitive culture where okay. they feel like their values are depend on their grades. Such a sad situation. I can tell you, I never used to have good grades. They used to send the, our school report to our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Do we really have to send this to my sponsor? This is an embarrassment <laughs> because of the bad grades that I had. But you know, the only thing that uh, my sponsor is telling me is that Benson, you can do better than this. Mm -hmm. We pray for you. We love you. You see, they never used to tell me they love me because of my bad grades. Right. By them telling me that, it really developed something in me and it gave me courage to move on. And then I started to be a better person, to have good grace. Good grace comes later. It starts with love. Yeah. At the lowest point of a child when he's not performing well, it is the high time that a parent should stand there, should yeah. encourage the child, and should say more to the child on how he or she truly loves him yeah. or her. I came out as a winner now. I'm running a law firm. Yeah, I know. I, I loved when you said that, you know, when the children is kind of in the lowest point, that's when they really need the parents' unconditional, exactly. unconditional love. And that was the reason that out of um, close to 47 uh, yeah. children, we grew up in the same street. Yeah. We went to the same school. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. But I came out different from others. You just really beat these odds and became this wonderful lawyer and 
trying to help other people here. What are the uh, most rewarding moments as a lawyer? When your client pays. <laughs> when you, <laughs> when your client, pays. yes. Client pays is uh, it's rewarding us, but um, giving back, giving back to the community. Oh. Because not everybody can afford can afford legal services. So there are things that we call them pro bono. When you see people enjoy your services, it's, yeah. it's rewarding. Well, it, it seems like you are doing, you're playing a lot of role, uh, have a very positive impact on your community. So I'm very yeah. happy for you. I was wondering, do you still have a relationship with Compassion once you graduated? I run a mentorship program oh. to, the young, to, the, the, yes, to the young adults. Uh -huh. I always visit project centers almost every Saturday. I mean, this yes. may be my last question since you're teaching those young adults or young youth. What, what's the, your like, main core messages to them? I'm, I'm curious, you as a now, like not a recipient, now a giver of the lesson. I always tell them every now and then is that you are not like your father, you are not like your mother, you are you. Yeah. Yes, you're not like anybody else. You're a different person. Mm -hmm. I always tell them what I wish to be told by my sponsor. Right. I always use my testimony to tell yeah. them um, who they are and who they can be. Mm -hmm. And I have seen some of them changing. So, I mean, yes. that's just so moving because I was wondering what well, you would teach and you basically show your testimony, your, your life. That's the best yeah. teaching. You're important. You're loved. We pray for you. Yeah, you're yeah, precious. Yeah, and you're not like anybody else. Yeah, you're not like anybody else. You're like yeah. yourself. That's yeah. such inspiring teaching and such inspiring story that you have. And I'm just so moved and inspired by what you do and what you've done growing from a child in a very difficult environment to an adult, a lawyer, a leader who has such a big positive impact to other people. And I'm sure the, uh, all the other children and other people and parents who are watching this will be moved and inspired to live a life that has a positive influence like you. So I just really wanna thank you for your time and sharing your amazing, inspiring story. How was this? time with me and other people here <laughs> it was nice meeting you <laughs> it was nice meeting you it's been a, a very beautiful preparation we have had some times before mm. we have had some interview yeah. and everything so all right thank you're you welcome. so much thank you for having me all right thanks bye 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 아 오늘 정말 벤슨을 만나봤는데요 아, 제가 바라기를 지금 같이 보시는 우리 모든 분들도 너는 사랑받는 사람이야 너는 존귀한 존중받을 사람이야 이런 메시지가 그 사람을 정말 변화시킨 그런 거에 어, 정말 감동을 받으셨기를 바라고 어, 이걸 계기로 또 컴패션의 프로그램도 조금 더 자, 많이 알게 되고 또 우리 아이에게 정말 가르칠 중요한 것은 무엇인가도 알게 되는 그런 시간이 되었으면 좋겠습니다. 오늘 같이 시청해 주시고 같이 시간 함께 해 주셔서 감사합니다. 네. 네.